As the F-35 program inches its way through operational testing, the number of critical technical deficiencies is slowly dwindling, dropping from 11 critical deficiencies in January to 7 in July. However, the exact nature of these problems will remain unknown to the public, even when the deficiency itself is not classified. The F-35 Joint Program Office declined to characterize the fighter jet's remaining seven critical deficiencies, but said in a statement that it has identified and tested fixes for each problem. The Program Office confirmed in April 2020 that the number of critical flaws had dropped to seven, with only three deficiencies remaining from the previously released list of known problems. Canada's top military procurement official warns there is no quick fix to the software issue identified as the primary cause of last year's deadly helicopter crash off the coast of Greece, which killed six service members. Two separate internal reviews by the Canadian Armed Forces found the autopilot on Stalker 22 took control of the CH-148 Cyclone helicopter as the pilot was turning to land on HMCS Fredericton on April 29, 2020, sending it into the Ionian Sea. Master Corporal Matthew Cousins, Sub-Lieutenant Abigail Cowrow, Captain Kevin Hagen, Captain Brendan McDonald, Captain Maxim Myron Morin and Sub-Lieutenant Matthew Pike died in the crash. Among the recommendations to prevent similar incidents with the rest of the Cyclone fleet, the reviews said the autopilot problem should be addressed. Described as lethal and powerful by the U.S. soldiers who operate it, the MIM-104 Patriot gained a local reputation after its first live fire during exercise Talisman Sabre. Private Thomas Sorensen, of the 7th Combat Service Support Battalion, said the surface-to-air missiles, which can target aircraft and other missiles, exceeded expectations. I thought it was going to be one of those underwhelming things Private Sorensen said. But it's the biggest weapon I've ever seen, that's for sure. Two Patriot missiles were fired by Alpha Battery, 1st Air Defense Artillery Regiment, U.S., 38th Brigade, on day two of Australia's largest bilateral exercise. For most U.S. and Australian forces, it was the first time they'd seen the U.S. tactical missile in action. The Royal Engineers have taken delivery of a rapidly deployable medium girder bridge for use on operations and humanitarian tasks, say the British Army. The medium girder bridge will provide a lightweight medium gap capability and will meet the challenges of the future integrated operating concept. According to a news release, Chosen for its versatility and deployability, the MGB can be configured in several different ways. These include the ability to concurrently build a 31-meter double-story and a 5-bay single-story version. It can also be used with any other MGB of any age. These bridges provide our armed forces with vital capabilities in both military and disaster relief operations. The Army will take delivery of 17 of these bridges. The U.S. Air Force has detonated an AM-183A air-launched rapid-response weapon warhead in a first-time test. The AM-183A RRW is a hypersonic missile prototype being developed by the Air Force and Lockheed Martin to equip aircraft with the capability to strike high-value, time-sensitive targets. According to the USAF, the missile's hypersonic speed enhances its precision strike capabilities by enabling survivable rapid-response strikes against heavily defended targets. The developers are planning an operational prototype with a solid fuel booster and conventional ordnance package, which will be carried on the B-52H strategic bomber. The USAF Global Strike Command is also considering equipping the B-1 Lancer strategic bomber with the weapon. <laughs>